Hey, what's going on guys? So I am back and I'm here to review The Nutcracker and The Four Realms, the latest film by Disney. And for some reason, this film is better than Star Wars The Last Jedi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing. I, I never thought I would say that, but <laughs> that's right. A film about a ballet is better than Last Jedi. Why? 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 Like, why has this happened? I mean, the Clara character is essentially the main character in this Nutcracker film. And she's much more of a better character than Rose Tico in Last Jedi. Like, this Clara character is actually strong and independent. I mean... Maybe Ryan Johnson wanted Rose to appear strong and independent, but that wasn't really conveyed well to the audience, was it? I mean, Morgan Freeman's character in this Nutcracker film, he was pretty good, but I felt like he could have appeared in more of the film, because really he was only at the end and the beginning, and that was it. I mean, he sort of reminded me of Nick Fury because he had an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Can't stop laughing. Um, basically, this film had Alice in Wonderland vibes, but it also had um, Narnia vibes as, as well. Um, because the Clara character was like Alice, and when she set foot in the snowy realm, it was like she was setting foot in Narnia. That's the thing that ran through my mind whilst I was watching the film. I mean, Mackenzie Foy, who played Clara in this film, she's an absolutely phenomenal actress. Like, that that character of Clara is so compelling that you can really tell how intelligent she is and how strong and independent she is. So she really captured the essence of the character there. Um, my favourite scenes in this film, there's one where Clara has to climb a water wheel. There's also one that is just after it, when Clara kicks some tin soldiers in the face. I mean, I felt like there could have been more battles or wars in this film, but then I guess it wouldn't be child-friendly if that happened. I mean, instead of it being a PG, it would have to go to a 12 rated. Um, and also, they're trying to make this appeal to girls as well as boys, I guess. I mean, it, it's, it seems like the target or audience for this film was females, but for some reason they appealed to me. I don't know why. Um, maybe Disney have got their target audiences totally wrong. I mean, I guess it appealed to me because, well, it had Alice in Wonderland vibes, and I'm a massive fan of Alice in Wonderland. And also, this film features a strong, independent woman, and and I am a feminist after all, but I'm not. I'm not like an SJW, though, because I think SJWs go too far with their shit. Um, especially with their treatment of Stan Lee, which we're not going to go into in this video, but all I can say is that those people who are inside Stan Lee, they need to get a life, because he was an absolute legend, so don't disrespect Stan Lee. The world would be a very different place without Marvel. It's like, the same with you Star Wars fans. Don't disrespect George Lucas. Yes, he's not perfect. But we wouldn't have Star Wars without him, okay? So, well, maybe we might, but it, it might be called something completely different and it might have totally different elements. But, <coughs> um... But then you could argue if it had totally different elements, would it? be 
as successful as it has been. But anyway, we're not going into Star Wars because we're talking about Nutcracker, okay? So, the Kira Knightley character, the Sugar Plum Fairy, um, yeah, she was a bit cringy, to be honest. She was probably the most ca uh, cringy character in the entire film. Um, basically, she was pretended to be good, she ended up being evil, okay? Sorry if that's a spoiler, but it's kind of predictable. When you get to a certain point in the film, you kind of expect it to happen before the big reveal actually happens. Um, basically, uh, Helen Mir Mirren character is pretty good. Um, again, this is another spoiler. You think that, that she's evil to start off with, but then she's actually good. Um, so, basically, like, there's a scene where Helen Mirren, her mother Ginger character, she says to Clara, well, she, she says about Clara, foolish girl, just as she's left her presence. And, um, so yeah, that, that is kind of the point where the audience realises that something's going on here, that maybe the Sugar Bum Fairy isn't as sweet as she seems. But, but you can see, like, all of the themes of diversity and equality and all of that running through this. Like... <sighs> but I don't have a problem with diversity and equality. But when they keep pushing it in these films with their friggin' agendas, it just does my head in. Like, they're ma they're li they literally made the Nutcracker black now. Like, why? I mean, I thought the Nutcracker himself as a character was a bit bland, to be honest. I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe it was, because he's supposed to be, like, a soldier, and he's, like, a toy that's been brought to life or whatever. So, there's even this creature in the film that is literally made out of mouses, and it's called the Mouse King. Very bizarre. Of course, I'm aware Tchaikovsky composed the music for the Nutcracker. Um, and also the music for Swan Lake as well. Um, the Swan Lake music was actually used for the Russia World Cup. I mean, I, th I think there's a bit that is, at the end of the film, that's a little bit cringy. Um, essentially, Clara's father, he says to her, Oh, th this is the music that me and your mother dance to. I'm just thinking, like, why is he thinking about his wife when he's dancing with his daughter? Isn't that a bit sick? I don't, oh, I don't know. It's very weird. I was just thinking, like, dude, you can't replace your wife with your daughter, because that's a totally different kind of love, okay? So, to wrap this up, I think this is one of Disney's greatest films ever. I mean, it's up there with Bloody Treasure Planet and Lilo and Stitch, as far as I'm concerned. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose I ought to mention... um. Rogue One, because that's apparently a Disney film now. <laughs> and I've mentioned Solo and Force Awakens, but I'm not mentioning Last Jedi, because as we've already established, I didn't go much on Last Jedi. Um, <laughs> God's sake. Anyway, um, like, I don't get why they didn't relate, why they didn't release this film in December. It would have made more sense, because it was a Christmassy film, but there we go. Decided to release it in November instead. Um, it's because Disney want Mary Poppins Returns to obey their big Christmas film. So why didn't they just bloody release Mary Poppins this year and not crack her next year? Oh no, that's... Whatever. I mean, they're just losing money by releasing it in November instead of December. That's what I reckon anyway. I mean... Or are they though? Because if everybody sees Mary Poppins in December, then... Hardly anybody's going to see Nutcracker in December. So maybe they wanted to get Nutcracker out of the way first, so that by the time Mary Poppins comes around, 
but most people would have seen Nutcracker anyway. So maybe in a roundabout way it was a wise decision. I mean you can see it from both sides really, like you can see the stupid aspects of it, but you can also see the wise aspects of it as well. Like God knows why they make these release date decisions. There must be some weird reasoning behind it. Um God. I mean, like solo, why did they bring that out in May? Like that's the most random thing ever. I mean, like that was obviously the wrong choice. I mean, they thought, oh, it's gonna be a summer blockbuster. And it's like, well, we just had Infinity War, so really that was a summer blockbuster. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, you, Disney, you own Marvel and Lucasfilm. Like, why can't you just liaise with these companies better? Ugh, I just give up. Like, more people are going to see Mary Poppins Returns in this Nutcracker film. And I think that's really unfair because, like, from what I've seen f from the Mary Poppins Returns trailer, it looks kind of shit. So, <sighs> whereas this Nutcracker film, it looks good from the trailer. So that's what made me go and see it. <sighs> I mean, Mary Poppins already has the legacy behind her because the first film was a massive hit. I mean, <laughs> Disney know this. Like, that's why they brought Star Wars, because they knew the original trilogy was a massive hit. They just get money off of past successes. Like, oh, George Lucas was really successful, so we'll just buy him out. Ah, oh, it's just so... It just does my head in sometimes, like, I mean, like, this Nutcracker film was better than Beauty and the Beast. And more people saw Beauty and the Beast. And it's like, loads of people out there probably think that the Beauty and the Beast film is better than this Nutcracker film, and I don't know why you think that. I mean, why? Will you even have you even watched this Nutcracker film? Have you even given it a fair chance? I mean, it, I mean, or do you just like the same regurgitated stuff over and over again? I mean, like, <sighs> Clara's sister and her brother and her father. They only appeared at the beginning of the film and at the end of the film. Well, apart from that scene where um, Clara was with the Sugar Clown Fairy and she was looking back into her world when the Sugar Clown Fairy was basically explaining to Clara that time works differently in the four realms to how it works on Earth. Ugh. But the point is, like, surely, like, Clara's family could have been used more in this film, like, maybe they could have visited the Four Realms as well. I mean, is there going to be a sequel to this film? I have no idea. Probably not. Because, like, I think Disney thought this was going to be more successful than, it, than it's actually going to be. I mean, the promotion for Beauty and the Beast and Mary Poppins Returns has been better than the promotion for this Nutcracker movie, and I think that's part of the problem. I mean, look, we know Beauty and the Beast and Mary Poppins are big names, so you don't need to promote them as much. What you do need to promote is these smaller films, like the Nutcracker. I know, I know you do promote it, but you need to be better at your promotion. Like, why do I need to advise you on this? You should know this. Like, oh, it's so stupid. Like, this was this film was on a bigger scale than Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I bet Beauty and the Beast had a bigger budget though. 